Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship at Zion Lutheran Church in beautiful Camas, Washington on December 31st, the last day of 2023. I am so happy we're worshiping here today because we were worshiping here tomorrow. I know most of you would not be here um, still getting ready, watching football games and enjoying a a little recovery. Happy we're worshiping here today because we were glad to have you here today. I know most of you would not be here um, still getting ready, enjoying a little time. Uh, here there was an outdoor uh, uh, ice hockey game that they're going to up in the Seattle area. So they will be back next week. Uh, a couple of things. One is Family Promise starts this week for us. If you got here early enough, you may have seen the beds already being unloaded. If you have an opportunity after worship today to join us down in the social hall for coffee, um, we will also be putting together those beds and getting those rooms ready for our Family prim- Promise uh, families. And um, just want to thank everybody on behalf of Pam. We have filled the slots. Everything that needs to be done is done. We still have opportunities for folks that are willing to drive the Family Promise van. They do not have the age restrictions that the Zion van has. And so we do um, help move the families when they need to be moved. Um, And so if you need more information about that, please reach out to Pam and she can give you more information on that. Tomorrow being New Year's Day, the office will be closed, but uh, we will open after that. Uh, Yoga and senior fitness is starting again at the end of this week, uh, having taken a little break for the holidays. And just a a note for next week, if you are looking to recycle your Christmas tree, the Boy Scouts will be here on Saturday uh, doing that in our parking lot. You're welcome to bring your tree on down and get it properly recycled. And I think Deanna had an announcement too. Oh, here she is. Hello. All right. So for any of you uh, that are looking to read more of the Bible this year, today is the kickoff. Um, We have some nice packets uh, down in the narthex if you want to pick up a packet. Of course, if you get your email, I will email you the packet. And there were a few questions that came up. So one of the questions, can I still sign up? Yes. Right. Can I sign up maybe a month from now? Yes. Can I invite a friend or share the reading pack? Yes. And can I switch reading plans along the way? Yes, yes, yes. There you go. As you can see, we are ready to say yes. Uh, And, of course, if you already signed up, check your email. You should have already uh, received the electronic reading version. And we'll just have fun along the way. Thank you so much. I feel like it's just say yes to God day. I invite you to center your hearts for just a moment as we begin worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the Word made flesh, our life and our salvation. Amen. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior, let us confess our sins together. God of life, you promise good news of great joy for all people and call us to be messengers of your peace. We confess that too often we hoard our joy, our resources, and our security. We nurture conflict and build barriers. We neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. Where we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, Restore our trust, renew us with your grace, and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Amen. Hear the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promise through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus, we are forgiven and redeemed. Sing with joy, for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of God. Amen. And we begin our singing with Hark the Herald, Angels Sing. Oh, <laughs> 
of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We continue with the prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Seated as we listen to the word of the Lord. I'm so pleased today to actually have encountered two of my very favorite passages in the whole Bible. The Psalm 148, which we'll be doing responsibly, is just one of my absolute real, real favorites. And the other one is the Nook Dominus, the, the story of Simeon and Anna uh, in the uh, temple. I mean, this, this is a great day. All right. <laughs> The first lesson for the first Sunday of Christmas is Isaiah chapter 61 and 62. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. 
The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Word of God, word of life. <clears throat> ah, the responsive reading is Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praises, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. Hallelujah. The second Bible reading is Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. When the fullness of time has come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Word of God, word of life. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your words. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce 
your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanu, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When the family had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. I think Pam has a children's message today. I ask any kids or young or young at heart to please come up. You're very young at heart. Hi, Catherine. Oh, you have your happy. Right there. That's great. Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. A wise person once made resolutions that I want to share with you today. I believe that they will help you all be very prosperous and happy in the new year. And here they are. Lie, cheat, drink, swear, steal. Hmm, those are kind of strange resolutions, aren't they? Let's talk about them a little further. Here's what this wise person said. Lie back and relax a little more this new year. Let a little more life happen to you without so much worry. Cheat failure. Don't be afraid to try something new because you think you might fail. It is through failure that we learn our most valuable lessons. Drink from the freedom of knowledge. Many people around you have already been down roads you are about to go down. Learn from their mistakes. Visit with them. Swear to do your best all the time in every situation. That's all anybody will ever ask of you. Steal a little time for God. Every day, take a little bit of time to talk with God. You will have a prosperous and happy new year if you follow these resolutions. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to live this year in a way that is pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Thank you. I'm not sure how you follow up with the lie, drink, cheat, and steal in church with, you know. I think she got all the good parts today. Open our ears and our hearts to hear your voice, O Lord, that we may know you are near and answer your call. Amen. Our gospel lesson for today is likely well known to many of us, including Karen. You notice Karen's favorite verses all have to do with songs. And this one, when I was growing up in the Lutheran church, we sang the song of Simeon at every service. It was after communion was complete and before the benediction. We sang, and I won't sing, don't worry. Lord, now let us your servant depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory to thy people, Israel. This song is what we are to see during the worship, Christ's ministry in our world today, Christ's presence and grace at the communion table, and the individual peace this provides to each of us as we leave the sanctuary. I knew the song, and I thought I knew the passage, but as I prepared to bring you a good word from the Lord for today, I came to realize I was previously missing a lot of what Luke was trying to tell me. For in these few verses we have today, Luke is telling us the entire ministry of Christ, even before this newborn baby Jesus can even speak. So our gospel starts with the family going to the temple in Jerusalem, for it is their purification. So 
Mary must be purified by the priest after giving birth, and Jesus must be dedicated to God as a firstborn male. So we know that he has to be very small still. This is very early. Luke is reminding us that Jesus' parents are a faithful Jewish family adherent to Jewish customs and law. Now, it appears the priest, the religious authorities of the time, failed to notice anything special about this baby Jesus. For them, it was maybe just another baby, another two total doves, please. But within the temple, there are two people who take note of this Christ child who has been brought into the temple. One is Simeon and one is Anna. Now we are told Simeon was righteous and the Holy Spirit rested on him. So devout was Simeon that God had told Simeon he would not die before seeing the Lord's Messiah. And why did Simeon want to see the Messiah? Because he wanted to see the consolation of Israel, which is kind of a weird word for us. So another way to interpret this phrase in more common language is the comfort of Israel. He was seeking the comfort of Israel. He wasn't looking for glory or recognition for himself. Didn't want to sit on the right hand of God or anything. Nothing like that. He just wanted peace for the people of Israel. Simeon wanted to know that even though their current world was a mess, it was all going to turn out okay. And I know we all feel that way sometimes. The people of Israel were occupied by a great military force. We know this, the Roman Empire. They were taxed without mercy. There was corruption in the government. And most Jewish people were not even Roman citizens. So they had no recourse for justice within this unfair system. Even their ability to worship as Jews were at odds with the Roman government. Simeon wanted Israel to be released from the impression in which they lived. And you may recall, the Jewish people expected a Messiah who would be a great king, like the great King David, who would restore them to self-governance and to power over their own lives. Simeon was seeking God's Messiah who would reestablish peace and justice for the Jewish people. Simeon recognizes this baby Jesus coming into the temple as that Messiah, a Messiah who will be the salvation for Israel, a Messiah who will be light to both Jews and Gentiles. Um, Simeon goes on to tell Mary, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many they will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. In Luke's gospel, it is clear the mighty, those with the power who abuse that power and abuse others, will fall. And the lowly who deserve justice, they will be lifted up. Jesus has come to break down unjust systems and lift up those who have not been given justice. This is the revolution that Jesus, the Messiah, will bring. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, her soul too will be pierced. As Jesus suffers, so will she. For what mother is not crushed by the suffering their children endure? I read these words and am reminded of the mother's suffering today in many places, including Israel and Palestine, as their children are killed and maimed, as their children starve without food. A mother's pain for her child is universal, and Mary will know that pain. We turn now to Anna, a widow, who at the age of 84, never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the temple, night and day. What is that about? You may recall under Jewish law, it is the responsibility 
of the husband's family to care for his widow. We do not know if there was literally no male family member to care for Anna or no one who chose to care for her. But we also know it was the temple's responsibility to care for widows and orphans. Anna is at the temple night and day because she is homeless. Neither her husband's family or the religious leaders will actually care for her. And this homeless woman, whom all had rejected, and even in our own society, many would look past, has been gifted a sense of prophecy. God reveals to Anna who this little baby Jesus truly is. For as Jesus proclaims in the Beatitudes later in Luke, it is the pure in heart that will actually see God. Jesus, the Christ child, is carried into the temple for all to see, and only Anna and Simeon are pure in heart enough to truly see God that day. In these verses, Luke tells us who this little baby Jesus will grow to be, a righteous Jewish man who will come to usher in a new kingdom where male and female, Jew and Greek, are welcomed equally in the kingdom of God. A Messiah who will oppose the unjust and instead seek peace and justice for the oppressed. A Messiah that should have us saying every time we leave this church, for mine eyes have seen the salvation that has been prepared for all people. And I could stop here. But there is something still missing from the story. And that something is you. For this new kingdom of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, whose birth we remember and celebrate this Christmas season, it is dependent upon us entering the story. For together, we are all the body of Christ today. As we Lutherans like to say, God's work, our hands. You may have noticed today is December 31st, the time when many people make New Year's resolutions. Some of you are choosing to join the Bible reading group. Some of you may be focused on making healthier choices or maybe spending more time with family or maybe you avoid resolutions altogether and that's okay too. This year, I would ask that sometime between now and the Huskies kickoff tomorrow, <laughs> that you ponder a word for Christ this year. I know the important things. Not an extravagant resolution, seemingly destined to fail, but a single word. When you think of this season of peace, love, and joy, gets everybody feeling so much happier in the world. What is one word, one word, you can take into 2024 to hold on to these feelings of Christmas so that you might bring Christ into our world of need today? One word. Maybe the word is peace. Maybe it is courage. Maybe it is compassion. I could go on. The list is long. There are many words that allow us to share the peace, love, and joy of Christ with those we know and those we don't know. So to help you with some ideas, I've left some stones with words of faith in the social hall to contemplate with one another over coffee. Maybe your word is there and waiting for you. If so, please take the stone home. If it is another word on your heart, I encourage you to actually write it down. Place the stone or note somewhere you will see daily as a reminder of your commitment as the body of Christ. 
hold on to the Christmas spirit and all that it means by practicing Christian acts of compassion throughout the year. For we have seen the salvation that God has prepared for all people. Let us carry this message of love from God outside of these walls and into our world where it is so desperately needed. Amen. Please join me in confessing our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, in the world God loves. God, you inspire faith in our hearts and call us to rejoice with our whole selves at the salvation you bring. Make our churches places of belonging for all people in the fullness of their being. Raise up the gifts and the witness of people who are neurodivergent, living with disability, or bearing invisible illness. Hear us, O oh God. Your praise is sung throughout creation in all times and seasons. As the new year turns, ground us in your changeless and sustaining love. Keep us attentive to the rhythms of the cosmos and inspire us to live in harmony with all the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Give hope and stamina to leaders who work tirelessly for the sake of the most vulnerable. We pray especially for organizations working on behalf of children to provide basic needs, to protect from abuse and neglect, 
to address trauma, including the trauma of war, and to rescue from trafficking. Hear us, O oh God. Sustain all people who, like Simeon and Anna, have been waiting for salvation and wholeness, especially those we remember aloud or in our hearts. We pray especially for anyone living with cancer or chronic illness, all people who are in physical rehabilitation or addiction recovery, and those experiencing complications from long COVID. Hear us, O oh God. Let this community of faith be a joyful and welcome place for all ages and generations. Teach us to honor the wisdom of children. The inquisitiveness of youth, the thoughtfulness of adults, and the knowledge of elders. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for all the beloved who live with expectations and departed this life in peace. Sustain us in joy until we join them around your throne. Hear us, O oh God. Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Please share a sign of God's peace.
Please join me in the offertory prayer at the bottom of page eight. Please stand. God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world of abundance for your grace upon grace poured out in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heavens, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. A momentary pause. We have no bread. I'm pretty sure there's some back here somewhere. <laughs> I'm not sure. I know we have several people that are out sick, so I'm not sure if somebody was out sick today. I uh, apologize, I should have looked earlier. The Lord always provides. There will be gluten-free wafers for everyone. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us on this. <clears throat> Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son's Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless, <clears throat> bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Amen. We now pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the Lord's table, the Lord who provides for all. All are welcome to come and join us. For those worshiping online, body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
continue with the blessing on the bottom of page 10. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive now the benediction. God bless you and keep you. Jesus grant you grace and truth. And the Spirit send peace upon your hearts, now and forever. Amen. We're going to go out and just like Anna and tell the world, but go tell it on the mountain, our sending song today. Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim this good news.